Hey, it's Tyler and welcome back to After the Run. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on here, but today I want to talk to you about how I found out that running is fun. Running is fun again. And this was kind of a huge deal for me. And so I wanted to hop back on. Um, I'm going to video this and put it on YouTube, but I'll probably also rip the audio off to throw on the podcast because this was kind of like a major moment for me in my life as an athlete and as a human being and as a middle-aged man that's supposed to have a uh, crisis because that's what we do when we turn 40, right? We're middle-aged now. So I wanted to talk about having running be fun again. Now, I should explain a few things at the onset. One is I had forgotten that running was fun at all. Um, until yesterday, it had been over 20 years since I truly had fun running. Now, if I don't have fun running, why do I do it then? I, and I'm, I have to say now, I, I've always loved running. Running is something that I've found to be hugely beneficial and I even enjoy running. But there's a difference between enjoying, benefiting from, and having fun doing something. And so let me kind of spell those things out. The reason I run right now, one, is because I know it's healthy. It's helping me live an active lifestyle. It's something that I can do that I don't need a ton of equipment for. I don't need special resources. Running's a pretty easy sport to get into. Uh, you just need some decent shoes and a little bit of other gear and you're good to go. That's all you need. Um, and I enjoy running because of what it lets me do. Now when I go running, I personally like to run by myself. Occasionally I'll run with groups or with individuals and sometimes that's really enjoyable too. Um, I went running with a friend this last weekend and it was really fun just chatting with him, getting to know him. Um, I occasionally will run with my wife or with my kids and that can be enjoyable too, but usually I'm running by myself and the reason I do that is that's my alone time. That's when I listen to podcasts, that's when I listen to books. Um, I don't really listen to music when I run, but I'm usually listening to something. Now here's the crazy thing. Yesterday when I was running, there went a period of time where I wasn't listening to anything and I didn't even recognize it at the time. That's how much fun I was having. So. Um, so you can enjoy running without having fun. You can benefit running from running without having fun. But yesterday, things changed for me radically. What happened was I did some hill running. Now, I do trail running all the time. I live out in the country. I live right off a dirt road. And so most of my runs are on trails or on dirt. Sometimes I go up into the mountains. And, and so I've been to a lot of different places. Um, I've run some marathons and an ultra marathon on trails. But yesterday was different. I went to a, a new place in town. It's not new, but it's, it was new to me. Um, and I, I heard there were some cool hiking trails. And so I drove up to the mountain, and I think it was called South Point. So I drove up to South Point, and I found this loop. I looked on my app. I used Strava on my phone, and it had different segments. And I was like, oh, if I knock off a few of these segments, then they'll like say I, I completed something and I'll get some recognition. So I looked for the different numbered things on my app and I found one and I thought I would do the biggest one because I usually on Mondays um, I do anywhere from 7 to 11 or 12 miles. So I thought these look like relatively short routes, let me find the biggest one. So I found the biggest loop at this particular course and I started following my GPS on my phone so I had to watch it to make sure I was going the right way because there were lots of trails going off of trails. So I'm following the main trail, and it gets to this part at the, at the base of the mountain where you're looking like straight up, like you can't run this. This was hiking. So I start hiking, and I didn't know how long I'd be hiking up, but I wanted to do some elevation because it was the end of the month, and I was trying to get 2,000 meters of uh, incline for the month, and I was a few hundred uh, meters short. So I'm like, this is great. I'll knock it out at the beginning of my run, then I can get down and do some flats, and it'll just be a good run. Well, I end up hiking like straight up for almost two miles and, and I was going so slow, it was like 21, 22 minute miles. So like slower than I normally walk. Um, that's how slow I was going up this hill and this was supposed to be my workout and I was frustrated um, because it was not running and I love to run and I had to watch where my feet were going because there were all these rocks and stuff. And so the workout didn't start out the way I wanted it to, but it, 
you know, I was still getting a good workout. I was looking at, at my heart rate monitor on my Koros Pace watch. This watch is amazing. And it was showing me my heart rate and I was getting a good workout. You know, I was up in the 140 uh, heart, rate, heart rate range, you know, which is for me a, a good workout. And so, I, you know, I was able to think, okay, yeah, it's okay. And once I get to the top, I'll be able to run back down or at least walk back down. I didn't know what the trail would be like. So I did that for two miles, and then for the next two miles, it kind of went from this top ridge over to another mountain. And at this part, the run got interesting. It turned in from just a hiking trail into a mountain biking trail. And the mountain biking trail had obviously been built and, and worked on by a lot of people because um, there weren't rocks in it. it, it was a pretty solid trail, and it would go along the edge of the mountain and you know there were embankments and, and things and it was pretty fun even though I was still mostly climbing at this point um, changing from just rocks to an actual curated trail it made the run much more enjoyable so now I'm actually getting some running in and occasionally I'd still hit some steep parts and have to walk but now I'm mostly running well I do that for another two miles and then it starts going downhill and this was what changed my world. Because it was a mountain bike trail, there were parts where it would go up for a while and then drop for a while. And it might hit an embankment and turn really sharp. And when you're running, you don't want to get out of control because you might run right off the ledge. And so you have to be in control. But the cool thing about this trail was it never got so you were going so fast for so long that you couldn't pull back. Um, and just like, and I, I, I honestly totally forgot it was like this, but when you're mountain biking, you want to be on trails like this where you can speed up and slow down, where you can exert energy on the downhill so that'll propel you to the uphill. And I was doing that running, but it felt like I was mountain biking in a way because I was using the momentum, I was using the natural curves of the trail uh, to kind of catapult myself around. And I got to the part where I started enjoying it more and more. I would like, burst down a trail and then have a, an incline for like 20 meters or something. And I would just burst right up that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am going at a full out sprint up a mountain. And I'm not used to that because usually you're dead tired and you're, you know, watching out for rocks. But on this mountain bike trail, I could just totally run down and then propel right back up. And there were times where I would go down and then there'd be a big curve and there, it would be a, have an embankment on the side and I would run around the embankment and it felt like I was like in a race car or something and I would just go up on the side and, and use the momentum. Well I started getting braver and braver the more I did this and the cool part about it was that as I got more brave I had more of an adventure and I would start like running and then jumping off a rock and I would take that momentum and I'd leap into the air and then land and and it, it honestly was fun. Like, it, for me, the closest sensation, and honestly, this is one of my all-time favorite things to do in the world, is downhill skiing. And it started to feel like downhill skiing. Or if you're a mountain biker, it felt like, I've been on mountain bike runs like this before, where when you're catching the air and when you're hitting the sharp embankment, there, it's just this adrenaline rush. And as a really, really slow distance runner, I don't get those kind of adrenaline rushes very often. So if you think of your more extreme sports, your water skiing and stuff like that, it felt more like that. But I'm just on a mountain running. Well, it got to be so fun that I was smiling, I'm laughing out loud by myself on this trail, and I just had a blast with it. I ended up going for over eight miles and it felt like it just was by, and it, honestly, it took me a long time. It was like two full hours just to do eight miles, and that's a super slow pace, but it was some of the most enjoyable running I've ever done in my life. So I was reminded how fun can, running can be, but it doesn't stop there. That evening, as a family, we had already made plans to go to a track, to a high school track, and do our Christians and Olympics. Now this is something that we try to do every year or two. Uh, this last year it kind of fell apart with the extended family, so we just decided to do it as a, our own small family unit. So we drove out to a high school, not even in our own city, we were going off to pick some apricots 
in a small farm town uh, about a half hour from here. So we drove out to their high school in this small town and we went to the track and we competed in just a few events. We, did, we started with the 100 meters, then we did the 400 meters, then we did the discus, and then we decided to forego the shot put and the long jump. Um, we just didn't have time. But as a family, we, ne we have been training all summer because we want to do our best for the Olympics. And we were getting ready to compete with other extended family members. But in this case, because it was just us again, we just decided let's try to beat, get our personal records in all of our events. And so um, we knew what we had trained to and so we had goals in mind. And we started and some of the runs we did individually but most of them we did together and then we just stopped the timer as people passed. And it was so fun especially to watch the kids who have been training and practicing and they got that rush of doing their best and, and all of them set personal records in at least the 100 meter and the 400 meter. We're not so good at discus yet and some of the other events but in those two short running events where we've been practicing consistently for a while they hit uh, some of their personal best. Now I wish I could say that I hit all my personal best but I didn't. The truth is I'm, I'm still pretty big, I'm still a little overweight and while I'm way faster than I was one, two, five years ago, um, back in my younger days, I was a lot faster than I am now. So I've still got some work to do uh, to hit some personal bests. But I felt really good about hitting my best time for the last decade, you know, and, and being able to do my best. To, to do 100 meters in, in 14 and a half seconds uh, for someone my size, you know, I, I think that's pretty, I, I don't know if that's good, but for me that was good. And, and to do 100 meters in, oh, it was like 82 seconds, um, that's not blazing fast, you know, a, a minute and 22 seconds, but for me it was fast. And so it was really rewarding in a different way. So it was satisfying, not in the same way that my mountain running in the morning was fun, but this was a very satisfying run. Well, with all the fun and the satisfaction I got out of running yesterday, I thought about that quite a bit um, in the evening and again this morning as I went out on my run. This morning was also fun. I wanted to PR in a 10K, so I did. So I went out and I ran as fast as I could this morning and I did a, a 10K in right around 55 minutes, which is awesome for me. And that was very satisfying too. And as I was cooling down from that and thinking, what are the lessons learned? Well, here's the biggest lesson learned for me. You know, a year ago I was 300 pounds and I could barely run at all. And there's no way I could have done any of the things that I did this weekend. I couldn't have done the mountain run. I couldn't have done the Olympics. I couldn't have done a 10K in 55 minutes. And I'm just grateful for the consistency. Um, the reason I've been able to do some physical things now that I couldn't do a year ago is because for the last year I'm getting out there every day uh, except for Sundays, and I'm, and I'm running. Uh, this month I've run 220 miles in one month. I mean, that's like almost 10 miles a day for me. And I have the luxury of a, a little bit of a flexible schedule over the summer, and that's why I've been able to do that. That's not gonna be my norm moving forward. But 220 miles will do a lot for you. Now, the funny thing here is I actually gained weight this month. So, um, originally I started running to lose weight and last year as I lost a hundred pounds um, running was a big part of that but now you know you can not outrun a bad diet and what I found was this summer I let my diet slip a little bit and so even though I was running 220 miles this month I put on like five pounds over the course of the month because my eating hasn't been so good and honestly the other reason is because I'm adding muscle and muscle weighs a little bit more than fat actually a lot more than fat and so while I might be in a little bit better physical shape, and actually my body fat percentage is about the same after a month, so I put on more fat, but I put on more muscle, and it just is evening itself out. Um, I still have a lot to learn about health and nutrition, and so I was thinking about that running. I'm grateful that I took off the weight, but I can't let my diet go to pot, because then I'm not gonna continue to improve and be able to get personal bests. Um, another thing that I thought about, aside from consistency, was the value of involving others in your exercise. You know, going out to the Christensen Olympics last night was so fun for me because I got to see my children do their best. And I got to see my wife do her best. She crushed it. And it was so rewarding for me to do this physical activity as a family. 
and involving others in your physical activity, even if you're someone like me, maybe a little introverted that doesn't like to run with other people, you can find other events and small time things that you can do with people. And there's some real value in that because then you can continue to encourage one another, talk about your goals, try to set goals for the future, and involving others in the process, there's some real value in that. So be consistent with your running or whatever physical activity you're doing, but also involve others in some way, and you'll see some benefit from that. Finally, the, the last lesson was, I know I could have done way better in, in my Olympics last night and in my 10K if I was eating better. So, you know, the hardest part for me is taking out and keeping out the sugar in my diet. Once I start having sugar, then I'm craving it all the time. And I found that this summer that I've relapsed a little bit, that as I've had not a ton of processed foods, but a little more processed foods, and then having some sweets, I'm having hunger pains and cravings all the time. So I'm actually really excited in some ways to get back to school, get back to the routine of the school year, uh, because then I know I've just got those meals at the same time every day. I can get rid of snacking altogether. I can get rid of sweets. And then I can get my body back to where I want to be because I still have 20, 30 pounds to lose. And I want to lose those because then I know I can even do more physically. And then those fun things like the hill runs, the, the trail runs, they're going to be even more fun because my body's going to be able to do things then that they can't do now. So that's really exciting for me. One last note, and I, I should mention this, as a 40 year old, um, running heels is different than running as a 15 year old. Um, my knee started hurting at the end and I had to be really careful. I iced it when I was done and I had to make sure I stretch more and things like that. So if you're doing extreme sports, just use caution. Um, don't be too crazy. Um, I had so much fun, maybe I went a little overboard and I even promised myself when I was done, I was like, okay, this is way fun but maybe don't do it every day or even every week, maybe once or twice a month. That would be good enough, then it'll still be magical and still be fun, but you won't hurt yourself. And so you have to be careful with stuff like that. Well, those are some of the lessons I learned uh, this weekend and how I found that running is fun again. Uh, I hope that this episode has been valuable for you. Uh, keep working hard and talk to you next time. Bye-bye.